everyone, Matthew Donovan here. This is the August update for my 2017 resolutions. August was uh, a long month, a busy month, and September, we're a couple weeks into September here. I started off September strong with uh, volunteering for the orientation week. A lot going on, so it was just way too busy to be able to upload this video. But as I said, there was a lot going on in August. I finished up my exams at the end of the summer semester, had uh, about a week off, my cousin got married, so we went to his wedding, and I also took a week-long trip to Montreal for Langfest, a uh, language festival, and I had a great time. I'll be doing another video immediately after this to talk about Langfest in a little bit more detail, but I will touch on it a little bit during the languages section. So that's the first update, our first resolution, as always. So how did languages go? Going uh, into Langfest, so Langfest, I believe I left on the 21st of August. Up until that point, progress had been slow during the month. I had been making progress. Um, I switched at the beginning of July to focus on French. I figured I'm going to be in Montreal. Montreal is a bilingual city for a very large degree to a very large extent. Um, so I want to focus on my French. I had done French for eight or nine years in school, uh, so it was buried in the back of my mind. It was just a matter of bringing it to the forefront, polishing it off a little bit. So I spent some time doing more reading, doing more listening, had a couple lessons on italki, and I really closed that at, at the first, maybe first week, week and a half of August is when I'd finished my italki lessons. It just didn't work schedule-wise for me, for the tutors on italki, so we finished that up, but it was a great uh, push at the start of that month, focusing on French. Now, this was all for the goal of when I got to Montreal to be able to speak at least a little bit in French. And it was uh, both good and bad at the same time. So when I first got to Montreal, I wasn't super comfortable. Uh, I defaulted to speaking in English. I wanted to make sure I could be understood, get my point across, and I really wanted to make sure I could understand what people were saying to me. Now, as the weekend went on, I was slightly more adventurous and I did start to speak a little bit of French. Now, oftentimes they would come right back in English. Uh, I suppose my pronunciation was off or maybe they could just tell I, I didn't speak French that well, but I did make an effort. I would go to the stores, you know, I'd ask for the receipt or the basics th that I could do. Uh, I, I would try my best to do that in French and really try and struggle through the response. But I think that this is just a phase in learning the language. Uh, you're at that point where you can speak a little bit. One encounter that I had, uh, one day I went to, uh, I think it's called, I forget what it's called. Uh, I, I went to a, a bakery to get a couple of croissants for breakfast in the morning. And the first day I ordered in English and I said, oh, could I have two croissants? And they said, yes, that'll be, uh, I think it was, three dollars and sixty cents so the next day I said I went back to the same store and I said okay I know how the conversation is going to go yeah you know, I was thinking about it in my head uh, what was it puis-je avoir uh, deux croissants s'il vous plaît can I please have two croissants I think that's correct I think I'm remembering that properly so I said that uh, puis-je avoir deux croissants s'il vous plaît deux croissants de beurre s'il vous plaît uh, two butter croissants and I don't remember exactly uh, what the response was, but it was something about uh, 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 avoir un bois aussi, uh, I, I think. I, I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, I wasn't fully expecting a sentence back. I was expecting more of a oui, uh, 3.60, you know, yes, $3.60. But uh, I, I said, okay, you know, I don't understand. Can you repeat? He repeated it again. Uh, and then at this point, I, I didn't understand. I said, sorry, uh, I don't understand. Can you say that in English? And it turns out he was just asking me, oh, do you want something to drink? Do you want a beverage? But I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I was, in my mind, I had thought through the conversation and that I wasn't expecting. So that caught me a little bit off guard. But, you know, I, one of the other things that I quite enjoyed was I kept a book with me. I went to the dollar store and I bought some paper. I bought a notebook and I fit it in my pocket. And as I would go through my daily life, I was thinking, how would I say this in French? How would I say that in French? And I was writing down 
words and things that I would need to know. So after this encounter, I went through, I learned the word for drink, for beverage, all of these things. If I were to hear them again, I might be stumped just the same, but making progress. So that was uh, definitely one encounter and it didn't go quite as well as I would have liked, but I was able to speak in French and that's something else that I was trying to do is as, as much as I can, if I can say something in French, if I know the words, go through the conversation in French, struggle, even if I can't understand a lot or anything at all, better to just speak. Uh, so that was a little bit of using the language and that was good to be able to use the language, but largely in terms of, of study, a lot of the study that I've been doing since I've got back from the conference has been just that. At the conference for that whole week, I was talking with other people from all different parts of the world. There were a couple other people from Canada, people from all over the United States, Michigan, Washington, D.C., Alabama, Texas, and also some people from the United Kingdom as well, uh, and, and all over. There are people from Slovakia and Turkey, all over the world, but primarily uh, lots of people from America. And I would be talking with these people and really just trying to learn what their methods are, how are they learning a language, what techniques are they using, what systems are they using, what processes, because this is something that I, I've really been struggling with and trying to figure out what really works for me is what are the systems that I can use, sorry there's a, a siren going on here in the background, but what are the systems that I can use for me, when can I use them? And one of the main things that I left the conference with uh, a passion to try or a motivation to try is more audio podcasts, more audio content, whether or not that's Glossica, which has uh, spaced repetition systems or sentences, basically. They'll say, say a sentence in English and then a couple seconds of pause and then they'll say it again in the target language. The pause is not long enough to give you time to translate word for word. So I don't remember uh, 100%, but I found a sample online and I'm pretty sure the sentence was the bags are nice. So translating that to German, it would be something along the lines of the bags are nice, uh, die Taschen sind nett. And even then, I had a little bit of hesitation. I probably would have been a second delayed if I was trying to repeat and follow along with the audio. It definitely does not give you enough time to think and say the bags, uh, die Taschen, die Taschen sind, die Taschen sind nett. You just need to be able to think and say the bags are nice, die Taschen sind nett is pretty well how it works. But it's that, it, a lot, a big focus that weekend was comprehensible input. We need input that we can understand. Um, this is something that I've been finding. I listen to content on link and I can listen to the audio for five or 10 minutes. If I have the words in front of me, if I have the text on my computer, I can read along and translate. But if I haven't already done that, that process, it's slightly use, useless for me to be listening to that audio. Whereas with podcasts or Glossica or all these other software, I can be listening to them in the car, I can be listening to them as I walk from walk to and from school, walk in between classes, and this is really the newest thing that I've been super motivated for these past two weeks and spending a lot of time on is really utilizing that downtime that I wouldn't be using uh, for anything else and trying to integrate some language into that. It's, it's largely a matter of you just need to put in the hours in order to be able to speak the language well, so finding times throughout the day where I can put in those hours. So as I said, I'll be doing a big update on Langfest, talking more about what we learned and, and all that. But that's been the biggest thing is I did French up until Langfest to try and integrate it a little bit, which I'm, I'm happy. Um, obviously could have gone better, but I am happy with how I integrated the French. And since I got back from Langfest, I switched back to German. I'm focusing on German probably until the end of the year. Uh, we'll see where I am at the end of the year. But I really want to improve my level in German. And I've been listening to podcasts uh, Coffee Break German is a big one that I've been listening to, and other methods, Pimsleur I've looked into, Glossica, all these other things, just because I need that audio, need to spend the time in the language in order to make progress. Uh, second goal is reading. Reading was going very well up until uh, when I left for Langfest. I finished reading uh, The Black Swan by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, a great book, I highly recommend it. It talks a lot about uh, probabilities, the occurrences of events. I don't remember 100% everything that was in the book and I don't want to share some stories that I think were from the book that were not, but one of them, uh, something that pops into my mind is 
in, in the war, they did a study and they were looking at airplanes that came back that were just riddled with bullet holes. And the study they were trying to figure out is, well, obviously, you know, some of these planes that are shot end up not being able to fly and they crash. So they were looking at where are the spots on the airplane that we should add more reinforcements, like should we add better steel or, or ho however they do it. And the tricky bit here is when you ask people and said, well, where should you put all of this reinforcements? They looked at all the planes that they had that came back with bullet holes and they found that a lot of these bullet holes are, I don't remember exactly where they are, but I think they were in the fuselage, was when the highest proportion of bullet holes that they found on these planes were in the fuselage. And at first they said, oh, well, we need to add reinforcements to the fuselage. But when you think about it a little further, you find that that doesn't actually make sense. The engine is the spot where there were the fewest number of bullet holes. So people thought, oh, we don't need to reinforce the engine, we need to reinforce the fuselage. But what they weren't thinking about was the planes that have been hit in the fuselage are able to continue flying. They're able to make it back to the home base, they're able to land. So really, there's not a huge issue if a plane gets hit with a, a bullet in the fuselage. On the other hand, almost none of the planes that come back have bullet holes in the engine, in the engine area. So what does that tell us? If a plane is hit in that engine area, it likely means the plane is no longer able to continue flying and it probably has to crash and that's why the planes aren't coming back. So in fact, the areas of the plane that we need to reinforce are actually the, the places of the plane that don't have bullet holes. So this is one of the many stories that I believe comes from the Black Swan. If not, it's definitely concepts that are taught and talked about in the Black Swan. The Black Swan basically deals with uncertainty and randomness and how we should be asking questions and looking at things in order to make sure uh, we're seeing the big picture and we're thinking about things logically. For example, this is a short story here, why the book is called The Black Swan. At first, people thought that there was no such thing as a black swan. They thought that all swans were white. And every single time someone would see a white swan, they said, see, another white swan. There are no black swans. And they basically, every white swan that they saw was a confirmation of their hypothesis. Instead, what they should have been doing was searching to find a black swan. Because if you believe that there are only white swans, simply finding more white swans doesn't tell you anything. You need to look for the black swan. Because if you find that black swan, your hypothesis is incorrect. So it's a matter of looking at things, how you're thinking about these things. The black swan, it's, it's a long book. There are some chapters that are more focused on the math and the science behind it, but it's definitely a great read. And, and actually the author identifies this and says, you can probably skip these chapters if you don't care too much about the math. But that was a great book. And I also read The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg just talking about how we form habits, that the, the cycle of, I don't even remember exactly what it is, I think it's um, Q habit reward, I think. Uh, how habits are formed, how we go through them, that's another great book. But as I said, I stopped reading when I went to Montreal for that week. Uh, I was just too busy, the days were too long, and I haven't really started back again into reading since I've gotten back. I've been too busy with school but it was a good effort and I was making good progress up in the month of August, up until I left to go to Montreal. So definitely looking forward to getting back into reading. And actually on that front, I actually went to the library uh, the other day, the public library in Waterloo, and I picked up some language books. I picked up a Czech book, I picked up a Swahili book. They're all uh, able to be viewed for three weeks and then you can just renew them. So I was there, I said I might as well get the books that I'm interested in. I picked up uh, an Asimil German book. Asimil is something that people were talking about at the conference as a very highly recommended uh, system. Apparently it's laid out in a very good way. I've never looked through it before, so I'm interested to see that. Uh, another Teach Yourself German book. This one is Beginner German. So it may be a slightly low, uh, lower level than what I'm looking for, but I figured I might as well grab it anyways. A uh, Swedish book. I'm not sure what I'll be doing next, but maybe I'll spend a little bit of time looking into Swedish, and then an advanced German, and a German vocabulary book. As I said, I was just at the library the other day, and I said, uh, these books are here, I might as well pick them up. So I'm not sure, uh, those will probably fit into the language portion, 
uh, as opposed to the reading portion. I do want to keep reading fiction or nonfiction to some extent, depending on what's going on. But I did want to mention that. I took them out so I could mention that and show that. Uh, the other thing is exercise. Exercise during the month of August was basically non-existent. Uh, about the middle, middle of the way through the month, I was at home in Orangeville, and I said, I haven't done anything. Let's go biking. So I went out for an hour-long bike ride. But other than that, I haven't done much. Uh, I'm at this point, I'm thinking, probably there are two days a week where I can fit in some swimming. Uh, it works at the end of my day. After I'm finished with classes, I'll go swimming. I'm not sure how that will be. I may be tired at that point, because uh, it probably will be three hours since I've eaten, maybe longer, uh, and it'll be a long day. But I found two days a week where I can fit in some swimming. Um, hopefully I can start running again on the treadmill. I'll start doing that. Maybe even run outside while the weather is still nice. And something else that I was thinking of, of potentially integrating is some push-ups. Uh, just on the days where maybe I, I don't want to go down and spend a half hour running on the treadmill or I haven't been able to go swimming, just spend five minutes, do some push-ups. I've started, since I got back from Langfest, with a lot more spreadsheets. I have a spreadsheet for reading, which I've had throughout the whole year. I have a spreadsheet for exercise, which I've had for the whole year. I started another spreadsheet for languages to make sure I'm really spending the time working on those languages because I really believe that if it's not measured, it can't be achieved. So I need these spreadsheets to keep track. And if I get into that habit, even doing push-ups for five minutes a day will give me something to put on the spreadsheet, make some progress. Even if the progress is slow, progress is progress. Uh, Co-op at this point during the month of August, nothing was going on. I'll have another update, hopefully at the end of September. The month of September is when I'll be doing a lot of my co-op applications. Uh, so I'll be applying to jobs. Then during the month of October is when I'll actually have the interviews. And hopefully by the end of October, I should know where I'll be working for the new, uh, for the semester starting in January. So no update on co-op at this time. Um, moving on to GPA. It was a good semester, not a great semester, not as great as I would have liked, um, but definitely still a great semester in terms of GPA. That was the summer semester. And at this point now, I'm looking forward to the fall. I'm taking five and a half courses in the fall, um, three business classes at Laurier, uh, human resources, marketing, and finance. I'm taking two classes at Waterloo, another combinatorics and optimization course, as well as a computer science course. The combinatorics and optimization course is probably the course, This of all the courses, computer science I want to do well in just because I like computer science. But the combinatorics and optimizations course, I want really to look forward to that. I'm hoping to do a major in a combinatorics and optimization uh, related field. I'm hoping to do a major in mathematical optimization. So I really want to make sure I do well in this course, understand the foundation, understand the fundamentals. So that is probably the course I will be spending the most amount of time on. At this point, it's too early to tell um, what any of the classes will be like, but it'll be an interesting semester. Uh, I'm hoping to have great grades. As always, I am doing a lot more in terms of volunteering, which I'll touch on in just a second. So I may have a lot going on, a lot on my plate, but I think with good time management, good scheduling, that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I, I mentioned I'm taking five and a half courses. I'm also on a case competition team as part of Laurier. I'd applied earlier in the year to be on this case competition team, and I'm a member of the strategy team. So I work with two other people. I'm not 100% sure how the cases will be focused, where I come in in terms of the strategy, but as because I'm taking part in this, this course, every Sunday we're training for probably six to eight hours. I'm not quite sure yet of the time frame. I'll be getting a course credit for that. So that's just another academic course I'm technically taking, but it's largely a volunteer activity. So moving on to volunteer, I'm doing a lot this semester. During the month of August, there wasn't a lot going on in terms of volunteering. A little bit of preparation in the lead-in, but as I mentioned, I spent this past week and a half with the orientation week. We did a weekend of training and then the whole week of orientation. So that was a lot that was going on. Um, and as well, during the month of August, the last week of August was a lot leading up to make sure I'm prepared for that training. So I had to schedule uh, some other things for the promotions executive role as part of the emergency response team. So that was going on, but for the most part, August was a break in terms of the volunteer uh, activities. Going forward in September, it's going to be a busy four months. I'm the promotions executive on the emergency response team. 
we'll have weekly meetings, uh, as well as every other week we'll have meetings for the general members. So a lot going on there, plus shifts every week. There'll be a lot, but I think it'll be fun. Uh, it's a great group of people. I'm looking forward to that. I'm also a Business 111 TA for the first year business. That's a lot. I'm be doing two labs every week. Uh, we have weekly training, we have office hours, marking, a lot going on, but a great group of people as well. I know this because we had training just last week in September, so I'm really looking forward to that. JDC, the case competition team. A couple of the people on the team are also business TAs, so I met them at training. But other than that, I haven't really met anyone from JDC. We haven't had our first meeting. We haven't had anything going on. That will be happening later on, middle end of September. So I'm looking forward to that. I think all three of these things, they're all big activities, but I'm looking forward to all of them. I think I'll make uh, a lot of new connections and learn a lot and be able to grow a lot. So I'm looking forward to doing all three of those things. Plus, I have some other smaller things going on. I'm still the webmaster for the Double Degree Club. That's a position I'm hoping to push away a little bit and hopefully pass off to someone else. I'll also be taking part, hopefully, in intramurals. Uh, at this point, whether or not that's uh, inner tube water polo or ultimate frisbee, I'm not 100% sure, but there will definitely be a lot going on. Plus, every week, hopefully, I'll be, going, or I'll be able to go to trivia, either as a member of the emergency response team, trivia team, or the Business 111 TAs every single week have a trivia team. So there'll be a lot going on. Uh, my classes start early in the days, and a lot of these things go late into the evenings. So they will be long days. It will be busy, but I'm looking forward to it. And that's the update for now. August was a relaxing month. A rel uh, I spent a lot of time relaxing. Overall, the conference for a week in Montreal was just fantastic. I learned a lot, met a lot of great people, and I'm very glad I went. And other than that, exams wrapped up, so that's another semester finished. Uh, at this point, I'm done 21 out of 52 credits that I need to graduate. So not quite halfway, but almost halfway. And a lot going on, looking forward. So it'll be a busy month during the month of September as I get adjusted, get used to things, and get a routine and a system figured out. But I'll be back in a few weeks to give you an update on that. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.